In this video, looking at energy and heating, we're going to look a bit at specific heat capacity and we're also going to move on to look at the latent heat of a substance. So the things you should be able to do by the end is define what the specific heat capacity of a substance is and calculate the energy required to heat a certain mass of material. You should also be able to define the latent heat of a substance and calculate the energy released during solidification or condensation or the energy required to melt or vaporize a material and those are calculated using the same equation. So let's get straight into it. So specific heat capacity. This is the amount of energy required to raise one kilogram of a substance by one degree Kelvin. So that is the C in this equation here. So E, which you'll sometimes see written as Q, when we deal with heat, with thermal energy, we usually write it as Q. And you might also see the temperature written as a theta in here. Again, when you're dealing with Kelvin, you often replace T with theta. So those are your terms in your equation. So this is your mass in kilograms. Remember, temperature is now going to be in Kelvin, and obviously this energy is in joules. Now just an FYI, you can also use this to calculate the amount of energy emitted or energy you'd need to remove from a substance in order to cool it down by a certain temperature as well. So it works both ways. So let's have another an example. So we've got a two kilogram metal cylinder. So we've got M equals two kg is heated uniformly by this temperature change in three minutes using an electric heater with these ratings which you can use to calculate power. Okay, so first of all, let's calculate the amount of energy delivered to the metal container. So from unit one, you should know energy. Actually, it's in GCSE, not even unit one. You should know from before then. So energy is power times time. I remember power is the potential difference multiplied by the current, and then let's introduce T. So we've got 12 times 7.5 your current times by 3 times 60 because obviously we need the SI unit of time which gives us 1.62 times 10 to the 4 joules. Now if we remember our equation We want to calculate what C is, so let's rearrange that slightly. So, plug some numbers in. So, we've, we calculated our energy already. We know M was 2, and we know this was 12.7 minus 4.5. We don't need to change to Kelvin because we're looking at a temperature difference here. So the temperature difference in Kelvin is the same as the temperature difference in degrees. And if we calculate that and give it to the appropriate number of living figures, you should get 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 2 joules per kilogram per degree Kelvin. Okay, so specific heat capacity calculations should be nice and simple. And if you... Here is the typed out version, just in case. Okay, so that's that. So let's move on to the changes of state and look at the latent heats. So, latent heat is the energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance without changing the temperature. So it's essentially the energy required to go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or the energy released when you go back from those, so from a gas to a liquid, or the energy released when you go from a liquid to a solid. So latent heat of fusion, so this one here, is the energy required to move from a solid state to a liquid state. 
and the latent heat of vaporization is the energy required to move from a liquid state to a gaseous state. Okay, and this is normally expressed in a mathematical way. So just as before, you often see energy written as Q, and for this L, you need to choose either the vaporization or the fusion one. And just as before, this M is the mass. Okay, and as I said before, this equation also allows you to calculate the energy released when you move down from a higher energy level, a, a gas or a liquid, to a liquid solid type thing. Okay, so that's that. So let's look at an example. So we've got a 3 kilowatt electric kettle with half a kilogram of water, and it's already at its boiling point, so we've got it at a fixed temperature, one of the conditions we need to apply, specifically uh, the latent heat of vaporization. So neglecting heat loss is determine how long it will take to boil dry. Okay, so again, let's first of all work out some key information. So we will need the total amount of energy required to boil it dry, which essentially boiling it dry would mean we boiled all the liquid water into water vapour, and it's no longer there, it's boiled away. So ML, we've got 0.5 kilograms of water, and the latent heat of vaporization of water is 2.26 times 10 to the 6, which equals, hopefully nice and simple for you, So that's the total amount of energy. So again, using a similar equation to before, we know that energy is power times time. So time is energy divided by power. So let's take our energy, divide it by our power. So that was 3,000 because it's three kilowatts. And that gives you so the appropriate number of significant figures that's two six things to the two seconds, and that, so that's a nice example of how you'd go about doing a latent heat of vaporization type question. And so here it is, nicely typed out for you, and that is the key information you need to know about energy and temperature change.